here is the bed assembly to 20 by 20 millimeter extrusions and the bed itself which consists of two 20 no 15 millimeter thick plates and again we've got all this protective film here it is those are two identical profiles this is meant to go together like this where you're missing a groove in the middle on the top side this is meant to be the top you're not going to miss the groove and the bottom side which we will be working on right now will be missing that groove over here and that confirms with the holes in those extrusions that are meant to hold it together like so here are linear slides the bracket for the anti-backlash nut and it's meant to look more or less like this two linear guides in this slot two linear guides in this slot and also in this slot anti-backlash screw bracket to hold it all together there is a different bag of nuts and bolts those are quite a bit bigger than the previous ones and those will not fit sideways they are much much bigger so before we put any of this on we need to make sure we've got the right amount of those t-slot nuts in each groove so there should be two in this one for those screws two in this one six in this one eight will go into this one just need to make sure that this is aligned and even i think i'm going to start with those long extrusions they will help keeping the whole thing aligned and i'm not sure are those meant to go all the way in hmm, this doesn't seem right because those screws are not fitting in exactly in the groove over here so i think this is where the washers go although when i just re-looked at the pictures and no it doesn't actually call for the washers on here and also those washers provided are much too big for those screws although they do catch on to the screw head and it's not gonna go all the way through where does that get me to but yeah that's uh, all together that makes that looks much better and while i've got those still loose i looked at the pictures uh, provided with the machine and there isn't a distance provided how far away from the edge this should be on the pictures is definitely all the way at the edge uh, eyeballing it it looks about the same distance as this so 20 millimeters from the edge so i'm going to do just that measuring 2 to 20 millimeters i should be able to align this and have it 20 millimeters exactly on both ends this one started pushing through the washer so i'm not too happy with that those washers are, don't seem to be the right size for that i found some washers thankfully and that should be more appropriate size for those screws take two you know what i stepped away from this for a moment came back i realized i cannot bear looking at those deformed washers much too flimsy for the force needed to clamp this down properly i found some different washers those are penny washers larger diameter slightly thicker but the center hole is about two millimeters smaller than the washers provided that we used initially so the head of the hex bolt will not push through it so this got to be changed so my ocd should be satisfied another thing that came to me after looking a little bit closer at those linear slides i noticed that when i pushed the guide rail through it quite a bit of some sort of lubrication oil leaked out so i thought yeah they're fully lubricated then it dawned on me that uh, that oil is not for lubrication this is just a preservative oil basically that it doesn't rust in storage that would explain why the slides are rattling and why the the bearings are rattling and why why the gantry sounds so dry when i move it along i've got some grease over here in a syringe this is just a regular multi-purpose lithium grease i'm going to stuff all the bearings with the grease and hopefully that will make it sound a little bit better and maybe they should last a little bit longer and just for comparison this is what a dry bearing sounds like and this is what a fully lubricated bearing sounds like to get those lubricated inside the bearing there are four lines of ball bearings each of the four they go in a little loop that has got part which is visible here sliding along the guide rail and there is a return sort of channel inside over here it's beginning the turn to go into the return channel so it goes like so around and in the other end i've got the grease in a syringe with a needle there is a little bit of slack between the balls so i can kind of gently put the syringe right at the end squeeze some grease until it leaks out and then move the balls a few places and do the same again basically i want to fill that channel behind and do that with all four of them 
when I have it all packed inside with the grease and there is still a little bit grease left uh, that hasn't gone into the channel but that's okay what we can do is move it around like so and that will pack it into the visible channel that uh, rides on the rail all that grease is going to fill the voids and provide good lubrication for the bowls so those are supposed to go in four places it's a little bit tricky to get the thread to catch on to the nut that's sitting inside the channel if i put the smaller hex key underneath and hold it up it uh, kind of aligns it with the level it's much easier to do it that way this is not to be tightened just yet the final alignment will need to happen once it's all assembled in one piece and that's done and we're left with two t-slot nuts in the middle over here and those are to hold the bracket for the anti-backlash nut what we'll need is the bracket two parts of the anti-backlash nut the spring and the little packet that had the little standoffs in here and uh, that standoff one of them is is for this bracket i think the other one is a spare i can't see where else it would go maybe we'll use both the first thing is to mount one part of the nut to the bracket shorter screws from the packet and little nuts and going in from this side so there are two two standoffs in the packet and i think i'm gonna use both of them because the spring it, when it's resting on one of it kind of bends and it's not, it doesn't look nice the spring will have two support points which will make it not bend but stay straight and that's why i'm changing those little bolts to the top and bottom position rather than the sides because it will be easier to access the longer standoffs so two of those there are two longer screws and two short ones still the short ones go from the top like that and then instead of a nut we'll put a standoff on so we end up looking with something like this this is slightly different in the instruction pictures but i think this will be better so then we have this nut and the spring two screws which are meant to hold the whole thing in place like that screwing it onto the screw might actually help in this situation so let's do that it is important to preload this because this is what provides anti-backlash facilities spring actually found itself weighed down a little bit which is fine it's still well preloaded but it's not resting on the standoffs those screws are not meant to tighten this nut down they are only meant to stop it from turning around and yeah that's how it works the nut is meant to have some movement in this direction along the screws and at this point i think i'm using whatever bolts i've got to hand this little bag there was six bolts left in here with four nuts and again i'm using my own washers because i think the other ones were not suitable we've got the bed assembled and in one piece the main frame however still requires some preparation so we need to put on the rubber feet get the motor mounted and mounted it to the frame bearing mounted onto its own bracket as well and mounted to the frame then we can put uh, the bed and the frame together from what i saw in the pictures the motor connector needs meant to be on the side like this and bear in mind that this bracket we need to use two countersunk screws because this sits below the level of the profile the bottom ones are countersunk and the two top ones are just regular hex nuts and the bracket for the other end of the screw get that more or less in the center so it doesn't rub against the screw but final alignment will be self-happening and the feet i've put those in right where the brackets end on each corner now the exciting task of putting all the t-slot nuts in the right place 32 of them just in this step Do you remember how big that bag was that's all that's left and let's get all of this mounted in i'm not going to fully tighten everything just yet we'll be doing the alignment once everything is in place probably want to move those as far apart as possible the more stability in theory this will have sometimes a nut doesn't want to turn around so you need to help it a little bit but yeah that's done and the motor it's starting to look like what we're trying to achieve which way is this supposed to go i think it's supposed to go this way ultimately it doesn't actually matter but uh, yeah that's how i'm going to put it and i've realized i've made the same mistake again i'll need to take off one of the ends i really like how how much of a wide angle i can get over here compared to my old setup in the old house this whole thing wouldn't fit on my bench forget about getting it into the shot i'm just going to wipe the grease off, off of the end of the rail and again wipe the grease off i should be able to rotate this now 
like this. So this is how far I can push those apart because of the long bars that are holding two pieces together. Now, in hindsight, I, I could have really put those, uh, put those further apart. This shouldn't cause a problem. They're about slightly wider than a quarter way out. And I need to figure out how far, how much offset I need on, on each of the sides. The best way to do that, I think, will be first to find the center and mount the motor and the bearing for the screw right at the center, mount the screw and everything else should fall into place. So it does get a little bit tricky right now because we don't essentially have any point of reference in what we're doing. Now we know that this is in the center within a couple of millimeters and we've got 154 and a half and slightly more to this side. So I need to maybe push it just about a millimeter to the right. Now it's even, let's do the same thing on the other side. That seems to be right in the middle. I think I'm going to flip this around. You see, I could have gone a little bit further away with those rails. Yeah, I guess it's an optimal point because the further they are apart, the more stable it is. But at the same time, the further they are apart, the bed can start sagging under load. I'm noticing a problem and I think those washers, I know what they were for. It doesn't actually show that in the pictures. The top of that bracket or the bottom in this example, so the thing that is furthest down hits the top of the bed just by a maybe a third of a millimeter that's no good what we are supposed to do with those put those between the linear slide block and the bed to lift it up a little bit that one millimeter but we didn't know that now we know so oh well let's fix it but even still i'm going to use my own washers so those are the ones supplied and i've got big washers like this they will provide a little bit more surface contact between the two parts. Hopefully we'll manage to wiggle it out and get it all done without having to remove the whole thing. So I've centered this bracket in this orientation and uh, I've tightened it so it doesn't move anymore. And now I'm just going to slide those two bearing blocks against this rail as far as the washers will allow it to go. 86.7 and 86. So we've got 0.35 millimeter twist so we've got 86.81 and 86.80 oh, that's uh, pretty straight okay now we need to do the same thing with the other side but now we've got it all aligned if i just feel the point where it, it rests against the washers I should be able to just tighten it and that should be aligned with the other one of course we'll check and see but i think that, that should be pretty accurate a slight problem. I have been talking to a camera, but the camera ran out of space on a 64 gig memory card. So, where was I? The last clip I checked, I was measuring the distance over here to here. And what I've done since I got this to within a tenth of a millimeter on, on each side. And then did pretty much the same routine as I did with the gantry. So, move it all to the left, loosen off and tighten, move it off to the right. And, and then when I knew that those were square, and straight. I tightened the linear bearings underneath and then moved it, scrolled it all the way to one side, loosened off the plate so it realigns itself with the table, tighten it up, move it off to this side and do the same thing, pretty much the same as with the with the gantry. While I waited for the files to be copied, I also greased up the linear bearings in the gantry and reassembled everything. That was pretty much straightforward. Now what we have is a table that's assembled, gantry assembled, and we need to put the two together, I guess. So here we go. This is starting to look like a CNC router. I'm keeping the motor at the back, the same as in pictures, I guess. And now we have to determine the position where to place the upright, where this should be how far back. Fully extend the table one direction. Now I'm going to measure how far away from the upright is the center of the spindle, approximately, well, 10 centimeters. So if I was to have the center of the spindle right at the edge, it would have to be like this, more or less. Again, this is not critical. But what's, what's more important is that this is square in this plane to this plane and because otherwise you, anything that you cut square won't be square. With the table fully extended and this position of the uprights, the spindle is right at this edge over here. So now I need to fully move the table in the other direction and see how much slack I've got. Divide that by two and move the assembly by that much. So that's the table in 
position fully up and it turns out that we've got uh, quite a bit actually it looks like 18 centimeters in order to center the work area i'll need to move this forward by four centimeters this way we'll get four centimeter margin over here this much and the same on the other side that's about what i'm looking for and now i'll lightly secure this in place camera's losing focus i think it doesn't like all the shiny stuff now to square this up i'll need to turn this around because i've got just smaller distance on the back this is the side that we have tightened up 66.3 millimeters if i want to do the same on the other side yeah there is a little bit of tension fully tighten this and we are really near the end okay that is done that is the mechanical assembly of this cnc router completed in the next video about this thing we will go through the electrics and hook up everything together and i guess bring it to life make it move we will probably have to look at some software that was supplied with this i guess work out some sort of dedicated computer for this i will have a look what i have lying around i hope you enjoyed this i'm not sure how many videos i will have to cut this footage into and because there is quite a lot of footage i'm not sure after editing how much time will it be but if it turns out to be extremely long i'll split it probably into one two or maybe three pieces that's it for this video thank you very much for watching please do subscribe for more random electronic stuff please do share those videos on social media that really helps and yeah i'll see you in the next one take care